the trunch bore, her face more like a boiled ham than ever, was standing before the class quivering with fury. Her massive bosom was heaving in and out, and the splash of water down the front of it made a dark wet patch that had probably soaked right through to her skin. Who did it? she roared. Come on, own up, step forward. You won't escape this time. Who is responsible for this dirty job? Who pushed over this glass? Nobody answered. The whole room remained silent as a tomb. Matilda, she roared, it was you. I know it was you. Matilda, in the second row, sat very still and said nothing. A strange feeling of serenity and confidence was sweeping over her, and all of a sudden she found that she was frightened by nobody in the world. With the power of her eyes alone, she had compelled a glass of water to tip and spill its contents over the horrible headmistress, and anybody who could do that could do anything. Speak up, you clotted carbuncle, roared the trunchbull. Admit that you did it. Matilda looked right back into the flashing eyes of this infuriated female giant, and said with total calmness, I have not moved away from my desk, Miss Trunchbull, since the lesson began. I can say no more. Suddenly the entire class seemed to rise up against the headmistress. She didn't move, they cried out. Matilda didn't move. Nobody moved. You must have knocked it over yourself. I most certainly did not knock it over myself roared the trunchbull. How dare you suggest a thing like that? Speak up, Miss Honey. You must have seen everything. Who knocked over my glass? None of the children did, Miss Trunchbull, Miss Honey answered. I can vouch for it that nobody has moved from his or her desk all the time you've been here, except for Nigel, and he's not moved from his corner. Miss Trunchbull glared at Miss Honey. Miss Honey met her gaze without flinching. I am telling you the truth, headmistress, she said. You must have knocked it over without knowing it. That sort of thing is easy to do. I am fed up with you useless bunch of midgets, roared the trunchbull. I refuse to waste any more of my precious time in here. And with that she marched out of the classroom, slamming the door behind her. In the stunned silence that followed, Miss Honey walked up to the front of the class and stood behind her table. Whew, she said. I think we've had enough school for one day, don't you? The class is dismissed. You may all go out into the playground and wait for your parents to come and take you home. <laughs>